All right, uh, good afternoon. Just uh, kind of a recap last week. You know, felt like it's been a while since we played, but, um, you know, last week. But obviously a good good showing out there uh, in Durham uh, down at Duke. Our guys came out and played right from the start, had a really good game offensively. Um, you know, incredible game on offense. Hard to do much better than we did. Um, and, you know, Malik with an unbelievable performance. Um, you know, it still starts up front. Our offensive lines played great, really, most of the season. Uh, this year, you know, as you, as you look at um, kind of the transformation over the last three years of what we've been able to do up front, really proud of those guys, um, how they've come along. And, you know, we're playing seven guys up front on, on a rotational basis, um, doing some great things. And then, you know, really spreading the ball out. I think as a, at a receiver room, there's about four or five guys that have made some huge impact uh, plays, you know, catching the football and, you know, scoring with the football. It's been great the last couple of games to see that. You know, and then what well, Malik's, you know, played with great poise the last two games and, 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 and then ran the ball outstanding against Duke the other night. So, you know, and then I think, you know, defensively, you know, it wasn't our best performance, but it was very solid. Um, you know, I do think we still got too many penalties on that side of the ball, um, extending drives, you know, but I think um, just, you know, overall we held them to field goals. I think that was huge in the first half. I think it got three field goals, and so we are able to extend the leads uh, with, with our touchdowns. So, you know, I think overall we're, we're excited about getting an opportunity to play postseason. That was huge for our team uh, to be able to play in a bowl game. Uh, which is fun. Going to be around these seniors a little bit longer, um, which leads us into this week. You know, senior day for us and um, an opportunity to, to, to finish off the season with seven wins and um, you know playing a good Kentucky team, uh, a team that's won eight games and um, you know you think about what they've been able to do this year. Um, you know. Transfer quarterback, transfer receiver, both of them very productive. Um, running back is very good. Uh, Rodriguez, he's been solid for the last couple of years. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and it starts up front for them. They got a really strong offensive line. One thing I remember from 2019 is O line, D line was very strong on, on both sides of the ball. Um, they're still that way this year. Um, and defensively, you know, they're, they're a defense that doesn't give up many big plays, uh, they keep everything in front of them. Um, they rally to the ball, play hard, um, and, and you know, and then normally it keeps them in the game um, defensively, but not giving up these big plays. So, very solid football team, um, but looking forward to the opportunity to, for them to host them this year and uh, and to play here in front of our our crowd, and, and hopefully we'll have a, a great crowd, and that's going to be a great atmosphere Saturday night. Scott, you mentioned the transformation of, of the offensive mm -hmm. line from when you got here until now. Can can you kind of put in words how how far they have come, yeah. and then how difficult it is after a couple of years? Then you get a new coach also. I mean, to yeah. throw you know to throw that mix in there. Yeah, you know it's uh, man, it's, it's it's hard to put in words. You know how far they've come come along, and um, you know just from where we were at and to where we are now is really night and day. I mean, you know, and, and a lot of those guys that are playing now were playing then. You know, and. Um, they were young and they've grown a lot and they've become really, really good football players. Um, obviously, Beckton was a great player that we had um, that year. Um, but then the rest of them, kind of guys have just grown into it. And, you know, Adonis Boone, Renato, um, you know, uh, Caleb Chandler's played. I think Caleb Chandler's had an outstanding season this year. He's an all ACC offensive lineman this year, in my opinion, for sure. Um, Cole Bentley's had a, a really solid year and he's played a ton of football. He's kind of the, the veteran of the group. Um, you know, Brian Hudson has come in here and, and done man, a great job for us at center and at guard. Um, you know, and then, you know, Michael Gonzalez as a true freshman has really added to the mix uh, with those guys up front. It's just Trevor Reed's a guy, we, you know, we end up signing him from GMC and very athletic o o offensive tackle. So, you know, just kind of put those all together and they've played, they played really, really solid this year. And I think, you know, going from one of the worst, you know, teams with tackles for loss and sacks given up to, to one of the better ones, um, you know, it's been great to see. And, you know, all the while, we've still been able to run the football and throw the ball. We're very balanced um, on, on offense. Um, you know, we'll, we'll average over 200 throwing and running again for the third straight year, which I don't – there's probably only a couple of teams in the country that have done that over the last three years. Um, you know, and, and that says a lot about the guys up front because that's where it all starts. So, um, you know, really proud of them. Scott, with this game not being played last year, is there maybe a greater appreciation for, for this rivalry in, in this game? <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, I think it's – it's always going to be a great appreciation just playing your rival team, you know, team right here in our state. So, yeah, it was unfortunate. We didn't get to play last year with everything that went on with the COVID. And, uh, you know, and we're glad we're playing this year. Um, 
you know, I'm glad it's here back, you know, because I guess it's alternating years, you know, whatever. But I'm glad we decided that since we didn't play last year to bring it back here, which is good. Um, you know, and it's you know surprising to me that that the Louisville Kentucky has not played for you know. I'm, I'm saying you know, I, I don't know when to, how it states back to maybe in the late '90s, you know. But why you know why this how how they have not played 50, 60, 70 years, you know, every year or whatever. Um, that was pretty interesting to me to to know that. But uh, you know, but I think it's um, I'm glad we're playing. I think it's just a, a great natural rivalry. Um, two two really good conferences coming together um, at the end of the season and. Uh, you know, so yeah, it's exciting. Scott, the importance of this Kentucky game is, it seems like it's layered, like obviously about helping recruiting, helps helps just with the program in general. Um, can just, where do you see the most important part of winning this game? Yeah. Um, and, and if you do win, how do you feel like it can help you recruiting wise? Yeah, I think it's just big in recruiting. It's big in, you know, when you think about ACC, SEC matchup, um, you, when you think about just walking around every day when you're going out to eat, it's big. Uh, you know, in our everyday life, I think it's uh, it's and that's obviously big in recruiting. You know, when you think about the state of Kentucky and um, you know, in, in recruiting in, in this state, so there's a lot of facets that make this huge for us. And um, you know, and then bragging rights for a whole year. You know, you you, you play once a year in football, and you know, and you got to wait a whole year before you get to do it again. So um, there's there's just a lot that that is on this game uh, each and every year, and it's you know, and as a you know, you, you better have the passion. You better have that sense of urgency. You better have that focus. Everything that leads up to this this game this week, and that's what we've talked about starting on Sunday. Scott, you mentioned after the Duke game that in 2019 you didn't have a full understanding and appreciation for what this rivalry means yeah. to Louisville, and that now you do. What was it between now and the that game last year that you learned about this rivalry that makes it so important mm -hmm. for not only Louisville but the fan base as well? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I, mean, I obviously knew it was a. It's a very important game. It's obviously a rival game, but for me personally, it, you know, I had just gotten here, and um, you know, you didn't, you didn't get a full sense of it. Me personally, I, but I think after living here now for three years and and being a part of it, and going, you know, going to the basketball games, and then you know, living with the fact that we got beat in '19. I mean, I, you know, that it's things big time, and and so, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, what it means for our program is huge, and but I think. Um, you know, for, for me personally, as you walk around every day, and you, you, you're going to bump into somebody that's a Louisville fan or a Kentucky fan every single day. So um, I'd, rather, I'd rather us be on the winning side of that so you got a little bit of bragging rights. Last week you were impacted by some sickness, and two years back when you played Kentucky yeah. were. How is your team feeling uh, this week, you know, coming in on Monday yeah. uh, to play on Saturday? Yeah, you know, we, we got through that game last week. We had several that were out uh, sick and or, and or playing sick. And uh, we came in Sunday. We, you know, we had some more guys that popped up, um, fortunately, uh, you know, as Sunday. So those guys hopefully will be ready to go for practice tomorrow. Um, you know, you kind of got your fingers crossed a little bit right now because we've had some of this sickness, and I don't, I don't think it's going away. Um, it's a matter of, you know, can we keep our guys healthy um, over the next four or five days before we get out there and play on Saturday. So. Um, you know, Sunday we were, we were missing a few guys, but they'll be back tomorrow. So we'll see. Um, I think only maybe one guy, maybe two came in this morning. So, I mean, I th hopefully we're on the back end of it. Um, but we'll obviously know more as we get through the, through the end of the week. But we kind of got our fingers crossed and, you know, wearing some masks around the building and, and washing our hands really good. So hopefully we don't spread anymore. Scott, uh, with the SEC expanding and a lot of talk about uh, a nine-game schedule, conference schedule, do you think this rivalry is in any danger? Do you think that Kentucky will keep wanting to play if they have to play an extra SEC opponent? Yeah, I don't know. That'll be interesting to see if you know if you're playing a nine-game schedule that only leaves three non-conference. You know, and how are you going to schedule that? Um, you know, I think that's been a huge debate for everybody throughout the college landscape of how do you schedule your non-conference? You know, and um, particularly if you're having to play nine conference games, it's a much easier when you when you when you can play eight conference games and have four um, of the non-conference to be able to have a little bit more maneuverability to you know, see who you want to play. So it will be interesting if we did go to nine and where you're, you're limited. And if you're playing such a tough schedule week in and week out, you know, do you want to continue to, your non-conference to be tough as well? I think that's, that's a dilemma and a, and a question that administrators and have to find out and figure out. As coaches, pretty much we just play who they, who they tell us to play. So. Uh, you know, I think, um, you know, you can kind of just look at, at what we've played this year in non-conference and what Kentucky's played this year. It's a different philosophy, really, um, of, of how you schedule your non-conference. And I think it just goes to whatever school you're at, um, what your philosophy may be. 
Well, I, I like playing the, the game. I mean, I, I would advocate playing us, um, you know, and keep, continue this this game because I just think it's a it's a great for this region. It's it's a great rivalry game, and I think um, I think the fans on both sides of it love it. And I think you know I, I like it in every other sport as well. I just think it's a it's a game that should be played in all our sports because we're so close, and that's a you know two really good programs. Scott, you mentioned receivers. Jordan Watkins has come out of. I mean, this year just seems like a really a safety blanket for Malik. Um, just what have you seen from him this year as he continues to step into a, a pretty big role? And I know he emphasizes him, Marshawn, a lot of the – they throw 502 at you out a lot mm -hmm. and just their, their importance of um, yeah. embracing the, the city too. Well, I think that, that Watkins just brings, a, you know, just a, a confidence to Malik to know that you throw him the football, he's going to catch it, man. He's, he's just got a – he's got great hands. He's got great body control. He's got some really good speed. Um, you know, usually big things happen when he catches it, first downs or touchdowns. Um, you know, I think Marshawn's the same way. He, he just feels very comfortable throwing him the ball. You know, Marshawn, if the ball's in his vicinity, he's going to catch it. Um, and he's going to convert to a first down most of the time as, as well. So, um, you know, it's just both of those guys have made a ton of plays for us in a passing game. And, you know, it's, it's awesome that they're right from right here in Louisville. Um, and, you know, got here in different ways. You know, we recruited Watkins pretty hard. And then Marshawn was a walk on. and. Um, has been a great player for us as well. So, so yeah, both of those guys are integral part in our passing game. Um, and they do it different ways. You know, I think Jordan's more of the speed guy and, and Marshawn, you know, more works underneath. Um, you know, so, but they're both equally as valuable to our offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, 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 we hoped he would. You know, I think when we put him through, you know, he came to our camp and put him through a lot of drills and, he could really run. He had great ball skills, but he also showed the, the toughness in the camp because we made it pretty tough on him. Man, he didn't bat an eye, you know. And you, so you think somebody like that's going to come in here and work his way into the to the starting lineup, and he did it pretty daggone quick. Um, and, and he's been he's been great. He's been great for us. He's been awesome. And um, you know, he's a guy that you as you look to call him plays. All right, you know, he's a guy. How can we get the ball to him? You know, which, how can we maneuver um, to get him open because we know big things are going to happen. Scott, when you have a guy like Malik that's playing the way that he's playing, you know, especially the last, you know, few weeks, mm -hmm. you know, pretty much the whole season, his ability to run and, and be able to, to connect down the field, does it change you as a play caller? Like, do you feel like you you've maybe been a little bit more aggressive than you normally probably would be because of the way that that he is and his skill set? Well, I think you know we we're pretty aggressive with. Malik and our play calling, um, you know, we've tried to be anyway. You know, I think sometimes it comes off more more than more times than, than the others because of who we're playing. I think sometimes the defense has a lot to do with that, of how they're going to try to contain him. Um, last week, you know, they were trying to be a big pressure team, and then once he broke the line of scrimmage, I mean, it's going to be a big play. And, you know, we've played other teams where, you know, they don't give you as, as many opportunities with it. So it dictates, you know, how you're, how you're calling, the, calling, calling the game. So, um, you know, but Malik's – this is what we anticipated him playing like, you know. I mean, he's a he's a dynamic player. He's probably to me, he's the best dual threat quarterback in the country. Uh, he's he's able his ability to run the football and score touchdowns is equally as important as his ability to throw the football. And you know what's awesome about it this year is that he spread the ball around. You know, there's not just one guy. There's a bunch of guys that have caught the ball. We're pretty balanced in our you know our top four catchers are right around the same in yards and catches. Um, you know, which is neat. So now a defense can't just key in on one person. Um, and, it t and it shows you that he's just not looking at one person either. You know, he's, he's looking at what the defense has given us and then let's get those guys the ball. Um, you know, we've, we've been a big play offense, you know, since we've been here um, in the last three years. And, you know, and that was a big question mark coming in this year. You know, we lost a, a ton of playmakers. Who's going to be those playmakers? And we've spread it out. It's been a lot of different guys, including uh, Malik. And it's been fun to see the how the offense has kind of come together uh, this year. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, this offense will continue to grow and, and be one of the most explosive offenses in the country. I guess along that line, um, your, your skill guys, last couple games, no, no turnovers um, with Malik and, and the backs. Uh, how much more do you, do you feel like they're concentrating or, or you know, you, you just mm -hmm. to not put the ball on the ground and, and be more careful with this check out. Well, I mean, it's something we've talked about. We, you know, you guys talked about it all last year, and then we came into this year knowing that we had to be better in that regard, and we have been. We've been a lot better taking care of the football. Um, it's going to be a crit critical this again this week. We got to take care of the football. We got to win that turnover margin. That's going to be a big part of this game. 
Um, you know, we got to continue to do what the things we've we've done so far. I, I think it's just you emphasize it, you you try to concentrate on it, you know. But we don't harp on it. You know, you can't just sit there and harp on it every single day because now that becomes your only thought. Our guys are playing, playing fast and making plays, and you know we're doing it in a way that we're you know you're not shooting yourself in the foot, and that's what we got to continue to be able to do. Scott. <clears throat> Scott, on the defensive side of the ball, you know, you guys always harp on, on creating turnovers. Yeah. They're a team that has kind of handed it out like candy this mm -hmm. this year. Do you even harp on it even more, or is just kind of business as usual and just let the chips fall with it? No, we, we know, like I said, we know that we want to win the turnover margin. So part of that is trying to create turnovers. Um, you know, we, we've had some times where we have created some, some good turnovers in games, and other times we haven't created many at all. Um, you know, it was a big pick we had the other night by Marvin. Um, you know, so you still go out there and you got to play the game. You have to play your technique. You have to do what, you know, within the scheme. And hopefully with, within that, then you're going to be able to create some turnovers. And, um, you know, a lot of that has to do with who you're playing and what they're doing that day and, and how are they, you know, are they loose with the ball, are they throwing in the coverage, those type things. And so, you know, we obviously want to win that, that part of the game. If we win that part of the game, we got a great opportunity to win the game. Scott, uh, as well as Malik has played, do you think uh, he's raised his draft stock so much that you can't have him back next year? You know, I, I don't know about all that. Um, you know, I think uh, he has played well. I think there's still a lot of room for growth. I mean, I think he can continue to get better and better. Um, you know, he has done a lot of things better this year. You know, I think a little bit like uh, Pitt's quarterback. You know, Pitt's quarterback last year was a solid year, you know, really solid year. But what he's done this year is incredible. And now he's probably going to end up being a first-round draft pick at Pitt, you know. So I think, you know, he's a good example of why you come back and uh, and play another year because you can continue to get better and better. And there's a big difference between it being a you know a fifth or sixth draft pick and a, a first-round draft pick. There's a lot of money on the line there. Scott, when you look at, at Kentucky and <clears throat> and what Levis brings them uh, as the quarterback, what what is key for your defense against them? Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, number one, I think you, you better know where that receiver's at. Uh, he, he's, he's, he's a dynamic player. He's very fast. He's, you know, one of the most explosive guy, guys in the country this year. So you got to understand where he's at because he will beat you. And, uh, you know, I think the big thing with, with Levis, you know, if he's comfortable in the pocket, then he, he, he can carve you up. I mean, he's got a big time arm, um, very talented player. Um, you got to make him uncomfortable. And that's more with most quarterbacks, you know, get him off the spot. You know, try to get him to throw it either earlier than he wants to, or he's out of the pocket now. He's got to try to make something that way. I think I think that's the way you, you kind of try to rattle him a little bit. But um, he's a good player. You know, they have a good offensive line, and and then a couple of that with a really good running game with with, with Rodriguez. I mean, he's a he's a powerful back uh, with great size, and he runs hard. And um, you know, we didn't do a great job at all in 2019 of tackling. You know, very very poor tackling performance by us. We got to bring our feet. We got to do a much better job of wrapping up um, and, and getting them down, you know. And I think, uh, you know, because if you don't, then they're going to, you know, they're going to get those first downs and give it, give you know Levis and the rest of the offense another opportunity to, to try to score. Scott, uh, going forward, uh, you all finished 500 in ACC play, but but looking how the league shaped up this year, how much better do you think that is now that somebody else besides Clemson, is, you know? Um, you know, can, can win a division. There, you know, there's more competition yeah. there, and there's less maybe a focus on the ACC being represented in the in the playoff, and more about you know just having better competition with them. Well, I, you know, this this year in ACC, it was it was as even as it's probably been maybe ever. I don't know. I mean, it was um, extremely competitive. Anybody could beat anybody this year in the league. It's kind of if you look at the records for most all the teams, that's 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 what's shown there. And uh, you know, Wake Forest was able to win three or four of those really, really close games right there at the end. And that's why they're right now sitting in the driver's seat. If they can beat Boston College this week, um, then they'll, they'll be our representative on our side. Um, you know, but it's extreme, it's been extremely close. And I think on our side, there's still three teams right now that still mathematically can, can play, can play for it. And, uh, you know, and we're right there with them. You know, we were, you know, we, we've, we've documented this. We want one play away on about three of these games, um, the last 20 seconds. And, uh, and didn't find a way. Well, a team like Wake found a way, and that's why they're in the driver's seat. So, again, I've, I've talked about this. It's encouraging the fact that we are very competitive and we're right there. We're on the cusp of being something great. And um, and I said that three weeks ago. Very optimistic about this team. I'm still there. Um, I think we got a really solid football team, a great foundation uh, for the future. This game will be huge for us this weekend. 
um, you know, if we can go handle business against these guys and um, propel us in the off season, the bowl game, and then in the off season, we um, it's very exciting. I think what we got coming back and uh, you know what kind of team we can have. Scott, you, we've talked a lot this year about the youth on this team, but mm -hmm. you have 14 guys that you'll honor. Mm -hmm. And of those 14, six or seven of them have been around for a really long time. Uh, can you just speak to what that group means and, and maybe specifically CJ, because he's yeah. kind of been that leader. Yeah, yeah no, it's, we talked about that three three weeks ago. It's like, we want, we want you know, at least a few more weeks with these guys, these seniors. And, um, you know, for us, you know, we've been around them for a long time now, three years, and we've really gotten to know them as people. Um, you know, I guess out on the outside, everybody gets to see him as a football player, but we get to see him every day as a human being. And, um, it's been awesome to be around him. Um, you know, from the program when we took over to where we are right now in this building, and um, they're just so pleasant to be around, and, and they're fun. They're fun to interact with. And, uh, you know, I want nothing for the best for these guys when they leave here, whether it be playing football and, and or in life. And um, you know, and we want these guys to come back and be a part of this program always. Um, you know, and I just, I always tell our team, you know, don't ever take the, for granted the opportunity to be around these guys. You know, particularly when it's in their last year, because you're going to think back on this five years, ten years from now, and you're going to remember all the stories and all the cutting up that you did, um, and all the all the memories that you're going to have, positive memories with these guys. And so, um, yeah, I'm, we're going to miss them, um, and you know, we want to send them out on a high note. You know, I think they'll they'll remember this game forever, um, and so we want it to be a very positive memory um, once we get done with this game. Scott, you mentioned CJ. We haven't talked a lot about CJ this year, but he's just been so consistent. Yeah. Um, that's what he's been kind of his whole career. Just how important has he been to a defense that's faced a lot of injuries and a lot of mm -hmm. adversity this year? Yeah, he's oh man, extremely important. CJ, not not only to the defense, to our football team. He, he's our leader. I mean, he, he's he's our guy and has been since the day I walked in the building. He's um, even back then. He's extremely mature. Um, he is very mature now. Uh, he does everything you want as a, as a football coach, um, as a human being. You know, he I would hire him in a second. You know, I don't care what business I have. You you want him on in your organization. Yeah, he, he's that guy. You know, he's the guy that, you, you know, if you had a daughter, you want him to marry your daughter. I mean, he, he's because he's such a solid human being. Um, he does everything right. He's a hard worker. Um, and he's a really good football player. You know, so he, he's what you want to have on your football team. And um, I told him whenever you get finished playing, you come on back here, we'll have a spot for you. So that um, just, I don't know what else to say. I mean, that's about as good as you can say about a human being. So appreciate CJ. All right, thanks, guys.